On September 12, 2025, astronomers detected something so staggering it threatened to upend everything we thought we knew about the universe. It began as a faint speck cutting across the darkness of deep space, then grew into a colossal object streaking inward from beyond the farthest reaches of the void. Its tail stretched five times the width of a full moon, so enormous that even amateur sky watchers with backyard telescopes could see it glinting like a silver wound across the heavens. Within hours, the world's observatories confirmed it. This was no ordinary comet. It was something larger, brighter and far stranger than anything we have ever recorded. Officially, it was catalogued as C2025R2. Unofficially, astronomers began whispering its other name, Swan. Before we go further, if stories like this pull you into the unknown and you want to stay on the front edge of every strange discovery unfolding above our heads, now's the time to subscribe, because what you're about to hear may never reach mainstream channels. Swan was already extraordinary. But its timing froze scientists in disbelief. Another object, already infamous among the astronomy community, the interstellar wanderer known as 3I Atlas, was inbound as well, racing toward the sun from the exact opposite side of the sky. Two interstellar objects, arriving within the same ten-day window, hidden by the sun's glare at their most critical moment, both displaying anomalies that defied every natural law we know, the odds of such a cosmic double entry happening by chance are so vanishingly small that even cautious scientists stopped calling it a coincidence. In private, they whispered another word, mission. If one strange interstellar visitor was enough to shake the field of astronomy, the arrival of a second, one far larger, targeting the same solar corridor, suggested we were not watching accidents of nature at all. We were watching an operation unfold. As data poured in, Swan's behavior quickly became the true focus. It wasn't just its size. It was its defiance of everything comets do. Unlike typical comets, which scatter sunlight in predictable patterns, Swan's reflective properties revealed metallic signatures, nickel, cobalt, and other alloys humans use to forge durable, corrosion-resistant materials. Some researchers began calling it the Fortress. While most comets disintegrate under the sun's stress, Swan appeared shielded, even armoured, maintaining a brightness curve far beyond what ice and dust could explain. Its record-breaking tail did not behave like chaotic vapour, but pulsed in subtle rhythmic changes, as if controlled micro-thrusts were guiding its motion. Imagine a skyscraper-sized tank drifting through space, cloaked in a shimmering halo not of gas, but of an electromagnetic shield deflecting solar winds. That is the image now haunting scientists behind closed doors, Yet even more unsettling than Swan's scale was its timing, because while Swan loomed like a fortress, its smaller counterpart 3i Atlas behaved like a drone, agile, erratic, capable of bursts of acceleration and abrupt tail color shifts that no natural process can explain. Together, they didn't look like random visitors. They looked like pieces of the same puzzle, two parts of a system converging on the sun at the same time, hidden from us during the very days when their true purpose might be revealed. When astronomers plotted the arrival vectors of Swan and 3i Atlas on star maps, something extraordinary emerged. Swan came from Aquarius, Atlas from Sagittarius, two origins separated by more than a quarter of the celestial sphere. Yet despite their radically different approach angles, they both crossed into the inner solar system at nearly the same solar distance, reaching perihelion within just three days of each other. Statistically, this kind of synchrony is impossible. Random comets scatter their arrivals across decades, sometimes centuries, but never like this. Then came the blackout. From October 8th to October 18th, the sun's glare blinded our telescopes, creating a window where neither Swan nor Atlas could be directly observed. Their closest approach to the sun and to each other happened precisely when Earth's instruments were unable to see. To many, this looked less like coincidence and more like coordination, as if their paths were deliberately engineered to meet under the cover of solar interference. Think about that. Two anomalies timing their rendezvous to the one place and time we cannot watch. In orbital dynamics, astronomers call this a corridor, a narrow window of space and time where two objects align in a way that defies randomness. Whether by chance or design, this corridor forced the scientific community to confront a possibility it has long avoided. 
What if they are not just passing through but converging for a purpose? While orbital mechanics raised questions, the energy data raised alarms. Atlas had already shocked researchers with bursts of acceleration, mimicking thruster-like maneuvers. Each pulse required the output of ten nuclear power plants to explain. But Swan made even that look trivial. Its implied energy levels were on the order of 10,000 gigawatts, more than the entire power grid of Earth. No natural comet nucleus can produce such raw output. Its reflective metals, its persistent halo, its rhythmic pulses, suggested not outgassing but control, like a machine using plasma bursts to steer itself. The idea of engineered propulsion, once dismissed as science fiction, was now quietly circulating among astronomers who could no longer ignore the numbers. Then came the pattern. The timing of Swan's pulses was regular enough to resemble a signal, patterned enough to hint at communication. Some began calling Swan not just the fortress but the beacon. If Atlas was the drone, maneuvering and adjusting, then Swan might be the mothership, a colossal structure designed to survive millennia in space, arriving not by chance, but by cycle. With an orbital period of more than 22,000 years, Swan could have passed this way long before recorded history, maybe even during the last ice age, leaving traces that our ancestors remembered as myths, carvings, or warnings. And now it was back, aligned once more with another anomaly, as if to remind us that we are not the only intelligence shaping the sky. Just when the world's curiosity reached its peak, silence descended. NASA, ESA, and other agencies quietly restricted data releases, suspending high-resolution imaging and radar tracking during the very days when the two objects were closest to the sun. Officially, it was explained as solar conjunction downtime, a standard safety measure. But behind the scenes, leaks revealed explicit orders. Avoid public statements, deny requests for raw data, reroute proposals for alternative observations. The blackout wasn't just natural. It was enforced. And yet the silence of institutions only amplified the voices of independent astronomers. Across forums and private networks, they rallied to keep their telescopes pointed at the sky. Groups in Spain, India and South America began sharing data. Desperate to capture even fragments of information governments refused to release. This grassroots resistance fueled speculation that something extraordinary was happening behind the curtain. Something agencies did not want the public to see. Because if Swan and Atlas were converging for a purpose, the real question wasn't just what they were, it was why they were here now. And if their meeting was engineered, humanity had already stumbled into the middle of a mission we were never meant to witness. As 3 I Atlas approached, its tail glowed and shifted in ways that seemed deliberate. Over weeks, three sudden accelerations were recorded, sharp, unexpected, spaced like clockwork, each coinciding with a strange colour shift in its tail. One moment the glow tilted red, the next it snapped to neutral, then back again, as if an unseen mechanism was adjusting its propulsion. Natural outgassing happens gradually, driven by solar heat. Atlas was abrupt, rhythmic, controlled. Energy estimates suggested each thrust required the power of ten nuclear plants running at full capacity, impossible for a chunk of ice and dust, logical for a machine. Meanwhile, Swan mirrored this behavior at a far larger scale. Its gigantic tail pulsed with microbursts, nudging it subtly like precision course corrections. Both objects, one small and agile, the other vast and unstoppable, seemed to be maneuvering within the solar system, not as wanderers, but as participants in a plan. And the chilling part, their thrusts weren't random. They appeared synchronized, orbital dynamics. The one thing astronomers trust began to betray them. Swan and Atlas, though arriving from completely different directions, lined up to occupy the same narrow corridor of space and time. Their perihelion points ended up only 50 million kilometers apart, a distance smaller than the gap between Earth and Mars, their timing within three days, all unfolding during the exact solar blackout window when Earth-based telescopes were blinded. For comet watchers used to centuries of data, this was unprecedented.